you guys i did it Woo! i'm so freaking happy right now if you're new to my channel hello welcome my name is autumn i am a licensed registered nurse and i am now a proud retired x o r r n it feels so good to say obviously i'm not a very good nurse because i did in fact burn myself with the curling iron this morning and yes i'm recording this in my car i really wanted to film like my initial reaction right after it happened but honestly right after it happened like i just had so many different thoughts and feelings and i wanted to give myself time to process all of that i also wanted to spend some time with like the girls in my cohort and just kind of like replay it all in my head, you know what I mean? It's also fresh and some new still, but at the same time, this is a decision that I've been contemplating pretty much since I started. And um, I was confident that, you know, I was confident in my decision. So I feel that I can still look at it from like an outside perspective. And um, I've given myself enough time to think rationally about it and, and be able to reflect on it with a positive attitude and mindset. Now, let me just say, I am well aware that everyone has different experiences. I'm not here to bash the OR or my hospital. However, I am gonna spill the tea about some things and you know how it's been for me and my experience. At the end of the day, just keep in mind that this is just my experience alone. You know, no two people are ever gonna have the same perspective on something. So what works for me might not work for you. And that is okay. Sorry, I have to keep switching angles because it's so hot and sunny and the sun was like glaring in my eyes. My only hope from this is that it helps someone out there who is possibly looking for a position in the OR, wondering what it's like to work there. Maybe you're a transition nurse or you're a new grad nurse and you've always been curious about the OR. This video is for you. Like I said, we're switching angles. <laughs> I am gonna make a separate video though on the pros and cons of OR nursing and weighing both of those. So if you're interested in that, I will link that in the description box down below or to the side or wherever it's at here on YouTube. I think we should start with the reasons why I chose the OR. I think that's a good place to start. If you haven't done so already, grab your coffee or your tea because I'm about to spill it all. So initially coming out of nursing school, I chose the operating room primarily because, this is so embarrassing, but primarily out of fear. I went through a majority of my nursing school during the 2020 pandemic. I really didn't get all of the clinical experience that I would have you know, likes to have gotten throughout my time in nursing school. So with that being said, I really didn't trust myself as a new grad to start where I really wanted to start out right away, which was the emergency room. Prior to nursing school, I had done a couple years of EMS experience. I was an EMT for a little while. And so I was pretty familiar with like the ER scene and um, how that part of the hospital ran things. And for some reason, instead of listening to my heart and just trying for that right out of school, I thought it would be a good idea to get some experience somewhere else first. But at the same time, I knew I didn't want to do med surge or any type of, I guess, traditional unit. And I know that when you're in nursing school, they love to tell you, start in med surge, start here, just start wherever you can get in. And I was like, you know, we kind of have like a, a bonus of graduating during the pandemic or post pandemic because now all of these places, including specialties, were willing to take these new grads in. And so I wanted to capitalize that and take advantage of that because man, I hated med surge. Like I would cry going to my clinicals because of how much I hated it when back when I was in school. So I knew for sure I didn't want to do that. And then when the opportunity presented itself to start in the operating room, I was like, ooh, that's so cool. Like the OR, the great opportunity. I'm sure that like after that, you know, either I'm gonna fall in love with it and I'm gonna love the OR or after that I'll have so many opportunities because of it. And honestly, I just felt like it was a great opportunity that I couldn't pass up. I also knew a girl that I went to nursing school with who was currently working in the OR. She had nothing but good things to say about it at the time and she told me to apply. And so thus I applied. Regrets, a few. I also do want to say too that looking back on it, it may have been beneficial for me to start on a med surge unit and then transition into the ER only because those skills will transfer over and in the operating room, it's a whole different skill set. I mean, it's a completely different type of nursing and I'm going to get into all of that, but had I started on a med surge unit, yes, it may have been a little bit more beneficial. Also as a new grad, I think you certainly can learn a lot on a med surge floor, but at the end of the day, follow your heart. If there is a specialty that you want to go into and they're hiring, jump right into it because why would you waste the time to learn something else instead of just learning as you go you know what i mean like if that's where you know you're gonna want to be and you know you're gonna end up there for a long time just do it yolo live your life live your truth you will learn it as you go so that's what happened to me okay learn from my mistakes i didn't follow my heart I kind of went out of fear because people were always talking about how the OR was so chill or it was so cool. It was less stressful. You don't have to do anything medical. And at the time coming out of school, I'll admit, like I was a little burnt out. So I was like, okay, this sounds great. You know, everyone has good things to say about it. Um, why not? Come to find out that all of those things that I was fearful of doing as a new grad would end up being the things that I miss the most and 
all of the things that I wish I would have done and challenged myself to do because I know in my heart that I'm a good nurse and I would have been great at all of those things. So had I just gone with my gut and, and followed my dreams initially and not have been scared, um, I probably would have been a lot happier and we could have avoided this all together. But I'm very happy that this happened because everything happens for a reason and I think it has unfolded into such a beautiful story. Let me just get into it and stop rambling. So those are all the reasons why I chose the OR. Now let me tell you all the reasons why I left because there's a lot. Reason numero uno, the staff. It's so unfortunate that people with big personalities and otherwise difficult people, the majority of what floods the operating room. I feel that ORs can be such a great place to work depending on who you work with and who the staff is. Unfortunately, at my facility, it's just not a good working environment and it really should be and it really could be but i personally feel like there are only two types of personalities in the or and that is either the bully or the burnt out nurse it seemed like everyone that worked in my operating room either hated patient care was sick and tired of it burnt out had years of experience and just knew that you know they had no desire to continue with patient care the way that they had been or the person who likes to be in charge all the time, likes to bully people, kind of make them feel this big because they think that they're this big for some reason. It seemed like everybody wanted to be the boss, the line leader, so to speak. It was just so ridiculous. And it, it almost seemed like a majority of my day, or I'm sorry, my job responsibilities was to deal with everyone else in my room or compensate for their attitudes or their disrespect, all while being expected to maintain this professional etiquette, even though I'm brand new and all of these people had like 25 plus years on me. I just thought it was ridiculous that I was being held to such a high standard and it was my job to kind of like make everyone else feel comfortable when these people had no problem humiliating you, embarrassing you, trying to make you look stupid in front of coworkers or surgeons or anesthesia or whoever. It seemed like they got some type of thrill from making someone else look dumb. Like I just don't feel like that's even safe for the patient. Like to have a successful operating room and a successful surgery, you need a whole team that works well together, that's able to communicate, that's able to be efficient and put petty- Oh my gosh, my phone literally overheated. <laughs> anyway, you need a team that's gonna be able to put that petty drama aside and just focus on the patient and focus on, you know, having a successful surgery. I just don't understand, this is like first grade. The fact that I had to deal with that, it is what it is, but um, it was more so like the bullying and all of that for me. I just, I mean, I don't support. You will never support that and get behind it. And if I had a choice whether to stay in a work environment that's just like that or leave and go somewhere else that I'm actually enjoying and, and having fun with, obviously I'm gonna leave and a lot of other people are gonna leave too. So it's just something that operating rooms in general, their management and leadership really needs to work on getting that down because you are gonna lose so many good people because of that reason and it's such a stupid reason. So let me just tell you a little story really quick. The other day at work, earlier in the week, we were doing a carpal tunnel release surgery. At the end of that, one of the dressings that we were using was a cast. So I had never made a cast before, okay? Like this is my first job as a nurse and most nurses don't spend their time making casts. Like I didn't even think that was something that we did and i'm not talking about um like actual wrapping and ace wrapping and stuff like that i'm talking like making a plaster cast so that was something that we were doing in the or at this time and so i didn't have gloves on at the time and again never made a cast before so my preceptor was telling me hey like i have the stuff laid out this is what we're gonna do and i'm like okay bet you know what i mean so i'm like getting ready to pick up the stuff and then the scrub tech who was in there who like by the way you're not my preceptor was like um, are you gonna put gloves on for that? And I was like, oh, yeah, I mean, let me get, grab them really quick. And then she goes, yeah, I mean, unless you have like a fetish for casts or something. Ha 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 ha. And I was like, okay. I was like, well, like I said, I've never even done this before, so how could that be possible? I don't even know what it feels like because I never did it before. It was just stupid stuff like that. There was another incident with another tech. This one, a lot of people had a problem with her. Um, it wasn't just me or anything like that. She kind of had this reputation in the OR for being a jerk. I overheard her saying in the hallways, yeah, I don't know why all these nurses come here just for us to treat them like shit. Like, go be a nurse somewhere else. So now, now we know that we're doing it, right? Like, we're consciously aware of how we're treating people. On top of that, we're proud of it. The way people acted just can never resonate in my mind, you know, why people were proud to treat other people that way. Treating someone else poorly would never make me feel good, ever, no matter what. Reason numero dos, the surgeons. Some people love working that up close and personal with the docs. Me, personally, hated it. Hated almost every second of it. There were probably six doctors in total that were contracted with my hospital who could tell genuinely wanted you to learn and understand the procedures and they were more than willing to teach you everything that they knew so that it could help us better help them. But that was it. 
Most of them, assholes. I've had instruments thrown at me. I've had implants thrown at me, wires, cords, plugs thrown at me. Most surgeons would walk into the room swearing, already pissed off about who knows what. I just, I didn't want to be a doctor helper, so to speak. I felt less of a nurse working with them. I almost felt like I was just showing up to help make their dreams come true and help them have a successful surgery. And at the end of the day, yes, this is a very, very important role. And it's completely necessary if you want this person to be safe. However, the little to no patient interaction was another big thing for me. And I just, I needed a lot more of that than what I was getting in the operating room. Which leads me to reason number three, not feeling like a nurse. This one might rub a lot of people the wrong way, especially if you are a circulator or you're a nurse who works in the OR. This is not meant to offend people that work in the OR. It's a very, very important job. It just didn't, it wasn't what I was expecting it to be coming out of nursing school. Being fresh out of school, I had so much medical knowledge. I was in a sense ready to just jump into the field and get my feet wet. And in the OR, it's such a completely different modality. I mean, everything you learn in school, you can practically throw it out the door. You will never start an IV. The most you'll probably do is put a blood pressure cuff on a patient and maybe the pulse ox, you can assist your anesthesiologist in doing most of the medical work because they have the utmost autonomy aside from the surgeon. You're kind of just there to like assist and oversee. Again, it is an important role and as a circulator, it is your job to know what to do if something goes wrong or where to go wrong during that surgery. But I mean, you just didn't even really get to see your patient or talk to them or form these meaningful relationships. And those were all the things that I was so excited to do coming out of school. The most patient interaction you'll probably have is anywhere between five to 10 minutes if you're lucky. And this was at my hospital where things were like, go, 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 go. This leads me into my next point. It's just the job responsibilities of a circulating nurse in the OR is primarily hooking things up, plugging in wires, cords, getting together all of the machinery and equipment that you're gonna need for surgery. It's kind of just getting prepared for the surgery and then overseeing it and charting while it's actually happening. Positioning is also extremely important and that's one thing that they will really emphasize and teach you throughout your orientation if, when you're new is how to position someone while they're asleep so that they're not creating any pressure injuries or laying on anything. But this just wasn't enough for me. It's like the person would probably not even remember me because of that retrograde amnesia before they go to sleep, so to speak. And this just was not satisfying work for me. Important work, yes, but rewarding and satisfying it wasn't giving me whatever it was that I was missing. One thing that I remember being so excited about when I was in nursing school was the DAISY Award. If you're unfamiliar, the DAISY Award is just an award that your patients can nominate you for and pretty much give to you in recognition for not even the work that you're doing, but how you do it. It's outstanding efforts in your nursing care. So not the fact that you started an IV or hit all your med passes on time. This award was different from just your average working job award because it really recognized and emphasized that you did an amazing job because of who you are as a person. It emphasized your aura, your energy, your light. The way that you interacted with this person made their experience so much more meaningful and so much better. In surgery, at least in the position that I was in in the OR, you ain't never getting no damn Daisy Award, bro. Like these people likely will not remember you. They may remember the nurse that was caring for them after the fact, but I mean, I would be shocked if anyone has had surgery and truly remembers or has had like a meaningful interaction or experience with their pre-op nurse or the nurses that were in the OR, such as myself. If you do, I would be really curious to hear about your experience with that. Free to comment that down below, but I just felt like a piece of my heart was missing knowing that these people likely wouldn't remember me. And don't get me wrong, gratitude always. I was so grateful to be in the room and like doing the things that we were doing. I mean, don't get me wrong. I've seen some crazy things in the OR and there are things that I wish I could show and share with you guys that I just like will never be able to do of HIPAA and all that. But it was cool to be a part of someone's experience, like their total knee replacement, total hip, open reduction, internal fixation surgery. But at the end of the day, these people aren't really gonna remember me and it wasn't the recognition that I needed per se, it was more of just that fulfillment knowing that I have a purpose here in life and because of this person's response to how I treated them, that purpose was being fulfilled. And in the OR, I just, I wasn't getting that whatsoever. Now, don't get me wrong, moments matter. I did not take a second of time with my patients for granted when I was with them because I knew that my time with them was so limited. And I truly believe that I made an otherwise very unpleasant situation much more pleasant just by being myself and because I love people so much and I want them to feel so comfortable in my presence. And I love that part of it, but because it was so short-lived and the rest of it was pretty much just setting up for surgery and then charting while the patient sleeps for three to four hours while they work. It just, it wasn't enough for me. My hospital in particular was also extremely time oriented and not because it costs money for the patient to be in the operating room alone, 
but because the surgeons basically wanted to see how many surgeries I could get done in a day so they can get paid. This is a very serious job and you're compromising patient safety by just trying to do things quickly instead of doing them correctly or efficiently. For example, when I was circulating, you have about five to 10 minutes maximum to do a patient interview. Now, this interview consists of very important things that you need to be aware of, such as if there's any metal in their body, what their allergies are, if they're on any heart medications, beta blockers, do they take blood pressure pills? You need to know all of these things and you need to remember all of these things. And sometimes your patients might lie to you or they might forget something. So you need to know if they've taken their contact lenses out, any hearing aids, things of that nature. Well, in the OR, they wanted to do things so quickly that they gave you practically no time at all. I mean, they wanted you going in and seeing that patient and then rolling back for surgery in like a minute or less. And that's just not humanly possible. It's also not safe. These are just some of my grievances. Another one is that we hardly had any training at all during our scrub rotation. In case you didn't know, um, scrub tech or surgical technician is also an actual job in it of itself. And I believe it requires anywhere from about two years of schooling to get the certificate or this degree. So they wanted us learning how to do this efficiently in like four months. And that's just not possible. My hospital, we were trained in all general surgeries. So this ranged from laparoscopic surgeries to eyes, nose, and throat surgery to orthopedic spine surgery to neuro. We had to become efficient in all of these different modalities. And if you ask me, four months is just nowhere near enough time to learn this and to become really good at this. And people were always telling me, oh, just give it two to three years. After the two year mark, you're gonna feel so comfortable. You won't even believe the position that you're in because you're gonna be knowing and understanding all of these things that you once were so confused on. And I was like, I just don't have it in me to learn this. Like I did not go to school to learn about machinery and robots and how to pass instruments and things like that. I went to school to learn more about pathophysiology, the process of disease, how these diseases form in the first place. How can we prevent and treat them? You know, treating the patient holistically as a whole person. I just did not have it in me to take the time to learn all of these different surgical procedures everything that's needed, all of the ins and outs, the complications. It almost felt like I was in school again. And at that point, I would have had no problem dedicating the next three to five years of my life, learning how to become a good nurse and really expanding on those skills and all of those things that I learned in school. But I just didn't have it in me to do what we had been doing. And so I knew in my heart, like I knew I wasn't gonna be there longer than a year. And here's the thing, I know that I could be good at this job, right? Like I know that I could be good at anything that I set my mind and my heart to. I just didn't have the heart to do it. Like, I mean, I was not passionate about this stuff at all, clearly. So I just knew it was time for me to go. I mean, on top of it, the ORs are freezing cold. I'm always cold, that was not a good mix. Everyone looked the same, our scrubs were blah. Most people's attitudes were blah. I just felt that, I just felt that I, I belonged somewhere else, truly. <laughs> I also want to add that I did shadow in the ER for a little bit because I was actively seeking other jobs at the time that I worked there and had more fun in the emergency room in one hour of shadowing than I did pretty much my whole time in the OR. So if that's not telling, I don't know what is. I need to wrap this video up because it was only supposed to be like 10 to 12 minutes long and now I think we're almost at like a half an hour. So if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. There's honestly so much more that I could say and I wish I had the time to tell you all of it, but there's just not enough time in a lifetime to be able to explain what my experience was like in there. At the end of the day, take this with a grain of salt. My experience is gonna be completely different from the next person's. You are the type of person that likes to work technically and work with your hands or you like working with instruments, technology, wires, cords, etc. This might be the perfect opportunity and the perfect job for you. If you are more extroverted, you like being social, you're a people person, you crave that deep patient interaction experience, I would suggest looking in other specialties first before you ever consider working in the OR because it is completely different from anything that you will ever do in your life. I really mean that. At the end of the day, just remember your why. Remember why you became a nurse in the first place and go from there. Do everything from your heart. Faith over fear always. That's one thing that I really wish I did. And thank you so much for listening to all of my grievances about the operating room. If you have any questions, leave them down below. Sorry that this was so long. Again, there's so much more than I can say, but thanks for tuning in to another really long rant in my car. I love you so hard.